Hello and welcome to this pre-concert talk about Beethoven's five piano concertos. My name is Lala, I'm a pianist from Halifax, and I'm very excited to share some stories about these incredible pieces with you. Symphony Nova Scotia is excited to present all five concerti in a two-night marathon, featuring Canadian pianist John Kamura Parker as the soloist. One of my earliest memories of these pieces is actually of John Kamura Parker performing one of them with Symphony Nova Scotia almost two decades ago. So it seems serendipitous that I introduce them to you now. The five piano concertos are among some of Beethoven's most important compositions. They were written over a period of two decades, from the 1790s to around 1809. What is amazing is that across all five of these pieces, we can see a shift in his composition style, as well as the changing musical taste of the audiences at that time. There is a noticeable transition as Beethoven begins to move away from the standard Mozartian concerto form, something we'll talk about a little bit later. Now, if we take a look at the first two concertos in C major and B flat major respectively, you'll notice that they feature the trademark characteristics of his early works. They exhibit youth, energy, and a certain straightforwardness in their musical themes. At the time, Beethoven was being trained to become Mozart's successor and moved to Vienna, where Mozart famously lived. Not long after, he began sketches of these pieces. These concertos are among his first attempts to make a grand impact and showcase the pianist as a soloist accompanied by orchestra. You'll notice that the themes are sweet and innocent, and they play on the youthful spirit that was so present in his earlier works. The second concerto in B flat major was actually written first. He started writing it as early as 1793 and gave a first performance in 1795. It would not be published until 1801, three years after the premiere of the first concerto in C major. The order in which the first two concertos were written is not particularly important. We can hear similarly sweet and spirited characters within the opening of the second concerto. Both concertos underwent multiple revisions, but followed closely to the form that Mozart popularized during his lifetime. Beethoven said himself that he was more fond of and preferred the C major over the B flat major concerto, as it was grander. The B flat major was composed as a drawing room or living room work, meaning the orchestration was small enough that all the musicians could fit in Beethoven's living room. It's hard to imagine an orchestra and piano all squeezed into this cramped Vienna apartment rehearsing this concerto, but somehow they made it work. On the contrary, the C major was written for the concert hall with horns, trumpets, and timpani alongside all of the strings. Nevertheless, Beethoven remarked to his publisher that neither piece was among his best works. Something you may notice is how the orchestra starts the concerto and almost previews all the themes before we even hear the soloist. It's sort of like a Reader's Digest version, and you'll see the soloist sitting on stage just enjoying the beautiful orchestral introduction. This is a characteristic trait of the Mozartian concerto form which he pioneered. It is incredibly conversational as the orchestra prepares this incredible introduction and segues into the pianist's entrance. This is also something that will change as we move on to the third concerto, which is the only one of the five composed in a minor key. 
It marks a very significant shift in the tone and atmosphere of his writing as he begins to break away from the mold of the Mozartian concerto. This piece begins with a dramatic and assertive character that completely stands in contrast to the first two concertos. Let's refresh our memory quickly with the beginning of the second and listen to how the orchestra introduces the pianist. In contrast, the C minor begins with crashing chords from the orchestra. He began and completed this concerto only a few years after the first two, and despite the short period of time that passed between each concerto, the third shows us more of Beethoven's unique style and individuality, bringing us all the hallmark traits of drama, turmoil, tension, and contrast that we now associate with his music. With this concerto in particular, we really feel that the concerto has been scaled up into a larger and more symphonic work. With this shift in his writing style also came some problems when the piece was premiered. There's a funny story about the first performance. Beethoven had programmed it on a massive concert where they also premiered the second symphony and the oratorio Christ on the Mount of Olives, as well as a reprise of the first symphony. They had one rehearsal for this concert, which began at 8 a.m. the morning of, and at around 2.30 in the afternoon, the rehearsal was apparently in shambles to the point where one of Beethoven's patrons had to send for baskets of meats, buttered bread, and most importantly, wine. In the end, they were able to pull it off, and Beethoven performed the majority of the concerto from memory, as it had not been written down and the score was unfinished. One of my favorite aspects of this concerto in particular is that it shows how light and hope often prevail at the end of his compositions. Throughout this concerto, there is a constant internal battle and agitation, and within the outer movements, there is an underlying sensation of feeling unsettled. However, sandwiched in between is the most serene and magical slow movement. Ultimately, the finale ends triumphantly in C major, as we feel there's finally a sense of resolution. The next concerto is easily one of my favorites. It was premiered at another one of Beethoven's crazy, infamous marathon concerts that lasted over four hours and featured his fifth and sixth symphonies, movements of his mass in C minor, and many, many other pieces. The reason why I love this piece so much comes down to only eight bars, the introduction. The G major concerto begins with one of the most distinctive openings and one of the most deceptively challenging. It is incredibly profound and poignant. At first glance, it looks like a series of simple chords and indulgent harmonies. However, it is one of the most difficult phrases to play. We open with a G major chord. And even this chord can be practiced endlessly. The orchestra then enters in B major, which is incredibly surprising and magical if done correctly. Finally, the fifth and last piano concerto is jubilant and exalting. 
the Emperor Concerto was written in E-flat major, a key that is often described as being noble and grand. The nickname was not original to Beethoven's conception of the piece and is rumored to have originated from a French soldier who attended the premiere and dubbed it an emperor of a concerto. At the time when Beethoven was composing this piece, Napoleon's armies had left France and were storming Vienna. This was incredibly detrimental to his hearing and deeply affected Beethoven. He wrote in his letters that all he could hear was the sound of explosions, and at one point, he left for his brother's house where he hid in the basement with pillows over his ears. Beethoven dedicated this concerto to his dear friend and patron, Archduke Rudolf, who was forced to flee Austria for his safety around the time of its completion. This only goes to show how deeply Beethoven's music was affected by his circumstance. As the final piano concerto he wrote, this piece opens heroically with three very grand, exalting cadenzas. The orchestra almost erupts with an E-flat major chord before the pianist takes over and grows out of the harmonies. Although this is the last piano concerto he wrote, it is nowhere near the latest of his compositions. Unlike the string quartets or piano sonatas, the piano concertos do not span the length of his career or his life. Perhaps it was because he was losing his hearing or it was too difficult for him to continue writing these pieces, knowing he wouldn't be able to partake in their performance. Whatever the reason, we are left with five incredibly unique and vastly varying pieces of music that encapsulate his inner thoughts and his genius. I hope you enjoyed this little chat about Beethoven's five piano concertos. We'd like to thank Dr. Piano for sponsoring this concert, and we look forward to seeing you at the Cohen.